Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. So yeah, it took me a hell of a time figuring out a way to get my Seahorse Seashell Party review up, and I got to thinking, can we get like a reverse SOPA thing going? You know, whenever a company tramples on fair use and the First Amendment in order to protect money that they have way too much of by removing a video that does not infringe on copyright, they have to pay us. I mean, I think companies that make millions and billions of dollars can take at least a hundred dollar hit for every one of these false claims. If they can't, then the system is fucking broken beyond all belief. But seriously, can we get like a lobby for that? Speaking of which, SOPA is like a zombie. It'll keep coming back unless you chop off the head. You've got to impeach the people who proposed it in the first place and make sure that they never have a career in politics again. I'm looking at you, Texas. Sorry, I just had to vent. I do that when things annoy me to a degree. When I brought up Squid Baby in my One Course Meal review, people asked me to review it. One of them suggested that that might be too much SpongeBob. Are you kidding me? I've only reviewed four of their episodes. They're still Atlantis Square Pantis, Truth or Square, Squid Baby, obviously, Demolition Doofus, To Love a Patty, Good Neighbors, Cephalopod Lodge, Boating Buddies, Summer Jump. God, there are a lot of terrible SpongeBob episodes. And that's not even counting the episodes that are still deserving a review, but are too flimsy. Like that episode, Waiting. Remember the subplot in Wonderbolt's Academy where Pinky was checking her mailbox? Imagine that for 11 minutes, with less movement and less humor. One episode that almost fell into that category was Face Freeze, which is even more infamous than The Splinter. And after finally watching the episode, let me give you my initial thoughts. <clears throat> okay, okay. Uh, I'm cool. What the hell? Plankton isn't even in this episode. Okay, okay. I'm cool for real this time. I guess I should start by saying where I'd place this episode. To me, it's worse than the splinter, and I'll get to why that is. In fact, the only Splinter episode that I've reviewed thus far that is worse is One Course Meal. And this episode shares the exact same writers. Yeah! The episode begins with Spongebob and Patrick eating lunch. Spongebob takes a drink and gets a semi-weird face. So the two of them decide to start making faces. <laughs> this takes up a majority of the episode, believe it or not. Mr. Krabs hears them and warns them that if they make stupid faces, it'll freeze that way. H hey, it it's like that other episode, Hookie. In fact, you could call it a direct ripoff of Hookie with disturbing faces. To reinforce this warning, Mr. Krabs tells a story. There once was this guy. He made faces at people. It got stuck that way, and then his tongue fell off. SpongeBob and Patrick agree not to make faces. You know, just like that other episode. And just like that other episode, they can't resist. And... And just like that other episode, because the bad thing didn't happen the first time, they keep doing the bad thing some more. Mr. Krabs made a mistake. Well, now that we know his tall tale isn't true, let's make lots of faces! <clears throat> Now, isn't that a pretty image for kids? How about that one? Or, or maybe that one? You know, your, your seven-year-old brother, I, I'm sure he'll love it. Guess what happens next? They decide to hold one face for a long time, and they intentionally go around freaking everyone out. Then they hold their face all night. In the morning, their faces are stuck. How predictable. You know, because it kind of happened in that other episode. So they go to Sandy, who offers to give them a massage in order to fix their faces. And you're a licensed masseuse, right, Sandy? In the same way that Patrick from the Splinter was a licensed doctor. Oh, and by the way, see those hands right there? Yeah! And after Sandy is done... God, that's even worse! Just like that other episode, SpongeBob goes to work and tries to hide the fact that he ignored Mr. Krabs' warning from his boss. And we get to see SpongeBob's hideous face for a large amount of filler. I'll tell you why. Because the writers seem to have some demented, unholy goal of giving children the worst nightmares imaginable. Patrick comes in, and Mr. Krabs, realizing that the two of them ignored his warning, gets the worst face in the entire episode. But Squidward, a totally innocent bystander, gets a face that gives Mr. Krabs a run for its money. And then the episode just ends on close-ups of all of their faces. Just like that. 
Okay, let's get a few things out of the way. First of all, no, I didn't find these faces as disturbing as I was letting on, but that's mostly because they passed by too quickly. Plenty of adults definitely wouldn't find this disturbing, but here's the thing. This episode wasn't made for adults. It was made primarily for children. So maybe you wouldn't be scared of this episode, but I don't know. Maybe your five-year-old kid sister would be. But no, I don't hate this episode because it's disgusting. First of all, I hate it because it's a ripoff in every sense of the word. I mean... This is pretty much hooky, with disturbing faces, with a little bit of the splinter mixed in. It does not have its own legs to stand on. Secondly, it has a similar problem to the splinter. It is trying to be disturbing. It's trying to freak its audience out. So to the defenders of this episode, let me ask you this. What's worse, being the splinter, or trying and failing to be the splinter?